Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations, here to talk about uh, SWR loss in a coaxial feed line when you try to force feed an antenna uh, with something other than a one-to-one -one standing wave ratio. How bad can it get before you really are losing a significant amount of power because of the SWR? Now, I'm going to assume that what you have is a coaxial line like mine to an antenna that is not perfectly matched by any means. It may even have a 4 or 5 to 1 standing wave ratio on it. Uh, and then you get rid of that SWR at the radio with a transmatch. But that doesn't do anything about the SWR on the, on the line. It just makes your radio happy. But there's still going to be SWR loss on the line. I have found much to my dismay, uh, as I gaze at this wall uh, paper from Great Images in NASA, uh, you can download this kind of stuff from that site, by the way, the Hubble site.org. Uh, I have found a number of SWR loss calculators on the internet, and most of them are wrong, because they assume that all of the, quote, reflected power, unquote, that uh, comes back to you from your antenna because of a mismatch, they assume that all of that power is lost. Not so. It gets re-reflected at the radio and goes back for another round, and it does that. It can do that a number of times. That's what produces the standing waves on the line. So I found one site, finally, much to my delight, that is right. It is the N4GUS, November 4, Golf, Uniform, Sierra, Repeater, Geezers, United Society, Coaxial Loss Calculator. It gives you a whole bunch of brand name coaxial cables that you can select from, and then you can determine what kind of loss you're suffering. Now, keep in mind that when you measure standing wave ratio, if you want to get an accurate result, you need to measure that ratio at the feed point, that is where the antenna meets the line. If you measure it at your station, you're going to get a, inf a deflated result because some of the reflected power will be lost along the line as it comes back at you and some of your original power will be lost along the line at, as it goes out, so you're going to get a, a bogus reading at your station. The actual SWR at the feed point is going to be worse than what you see at the station, and if there's a lot of loss in the line to begin with, the matched loss, if that's significant to start with, that difference can be considerable. So let's just suppose that you have 100 feet, of Belden 8237 coaxial cable like I have sitting out in my garage waiting for my my next journey out to the Stargazer Ranch in Matitsi, Wyoming where I will do that thing with the antenna on the truck and all of this. Let's just suppose though that I have that 100 feet of coax and I want to use it on yeah let's say the 10 megahertz band but my uh, handy dandy MFJ vertical will only go up to 17 feet and that's not long enough for 10 megahertz so I measure the SWR let's just suppose that I measure that SWR at 4 to 1 that's pretty bad the radio might not even accept that so I'm going to need a transmatch at the radio so I put my pal star transmatch at the radio and make the radio happy but the SWR on that line is still four to one. Let's say that I run the standard watts uh, wattage level that I run with that radio, 30 watts. Let's suppose now that, uh, okay, let's calculate this now. We've got all the data input, including the brand name of the coax, and we calculate it. If we had a perfect match on the line, we would get 0.556 dB of loss. Less than one dB. Now keep in mind that one to, uh, that um, less than 1 dB represents no perceptible loss whatsoever on the other end. The SWR loss is about another half a decibel. Now that's the loss caused by the, the 4 to 1 standing wave ratio is only a half a decibel. So what that tells me is that if I had a perfect match, the difference between the perfect match 
and the SWR loss uh, would only be uh, the total loss 1.075 dB, but the SWR loss is still less than 1 dB. So I'm not I, I'm not gaining anything by worrying about this 4 to 1 SWR and trying to put a ma uh, a matching network at the feed point. I can force feed this thing with a 4 to 1 SWR and still have less than 1 dB of SWR loss. Does that surprise you? I'm still getting 23.4 watts out. There isn't anything I can do about this match loss. If the SWR were 1 to 1, this is what I would get. You see these results? Match loss is still the same. Let's suppose the SWR were 6 to 1. Now we're approaching 1 dB, but we're still less than that. So even a 6 to 1 mismatch at the antenna feed point will not cause me to have more than the barely minimum perceptible amount of loss. 7 to 1. Okay, now, if I had a 7 to 1 SWR, that's what it would take to have it such that the person on the other end of the, of the communication circuit could detect the loss. I could get away with anything up to 7 to 1 on 100 feet of this coaxial cable at 10 megahertz and not worry about it. But what happens now if I decide to go to 28 megahertz? Gonna get some more SWR loss. Now it's considerable. But it's still not and it's still not uh, a terrible. I mean it's still okay to try and make contacts. Your antenna just isn't quite as efficient. If you really want your antenna to radiate the best you need a good ground system and you need to have it be an efficient antenna to begin with. It has to be a good antenna. You can have a one-to-one -one SWR with a rotten antenna, and that isn't going to do you. That isn't going to take you very far. A dummy load might have a one-to-one -one SWR, but it isn't going to make you very many contacts. So this is the site that I recommend, and I will put a link to it in the description of this video. This is one of the few that's actually right. Stangibalisco W1GV Whiskey 1 Good Vibrations Signing off until next time 73 and so long.